G'day everybody and welcome back to our curated playthrough of Mass Effect. In the previous episode we have been dealing with various criminal elements of the Mass Effect series. We received a mission from a lady by the name of Helena Blake who we met on the Citadel probably several episodes ago now. Uh, and it turned out that she was uh, one of the leaders of a syndicate gang uh, operating out in the Traverse. She wanted us to get rid of a couple of the other syndicate leaders so she could eventually take over the entire gang. We did that, but we also then attempted to arrest her. Uh, but instead we made a deal with her. Uh, rather than fighting with her, we convinced her to disband the gang. So it'll be interesting to see what implications that has for us once we go into Mass Effect 2 and 3. Uh, but aside from that, we also made it all the way out here in the Amazon cluster. Uh, and we've landed on this planet here called, uh, I believe it's Abaginium or something along those lines. Now the reason why we're here is because we were attracted to a UNSC or a Systems Alliance probe. Now this probe was actually very very old, in fact it was a probe used during the first contact war against the Turians. And uh, these probes essentially were used as uh, maybe booby traps or mines and they each contained uh, 20 kiloton uh, thermonuclear devices. Now it turns out this was a bit of a setup um, and uh, we met another criminal mastermind if you will by the name of Elanos Halliot and uh, he had essentially acquired one of these old probes hit it here on this planet and uh, he really tried to trap us uh, underground with the probe and was really intending to blow us up with it basically. We obviously managed to defuse the bomb and survive and in the process we have taken him out so this is essentially uh, his or what used to be his camp uh, along with his uh, followers. So a uh, bit of an ordeal last episode to be honest but uh, we managed to scrape through. Now we actually haven't completed everything we needed to do on Abaginium so uh, let's just continue. There's just one last thing here which is the anomaly. So let's make our way there. Must be somewhere on top of this hill I'm guessing. Okay, some scavenger. Let's uh, take a look. A Turian insignia. This body is a long way from anything and appears to have been here for quite some time. On the body is a book of drawings, including one of the Sil uh, sorry Siglar outpost. Okay, very good. And a cool 44,000 credits just for discovering that. Very nice indeed. Alright, um, let's just quickly check the map again. I don't really think that there's anything else, although there is a large sort of flat area here which looks pretty suspicious, but uh, that's okay. Um, with no indication if there's anything there, I am inclined to just go back to the Normandy for now. Alright, now we are still in the process of completing various side assignments, so let's just take a look at what's remaining here. Okay, so we've got still the valuable materials, Prothean data disks. I'm not entirely sure if we've actually found all of the Turian insignias at this point because uh, I don't see that quest. Um, 
at the very top. Maybe we did find all of them. But uh, anyway, uh, let's take a look at the other assignments here that are not, uh, I guess, uh, collectibles. So we've got this investigate samples, which we picked up when we were on Pharos, and this has something to do with Cerberus. So I'm inclined to actually leave this one alone until we actually deal with the uh, the Cerberus group as a whole. But then we've got this one here, investigate facility. So again, this is something we picked up in Pharos, and we have to make our way to the Maroon Sea cluster. Uh, and no, Noda Crew? Oh, I, I think Noda Crew is the name of the planet which is located in the Vostok system. So we'll actually uh, see if we can get this one done. And uh, yeah, I'm not totally sure we visited the Marine Sea, uh, sorry, Maroon Sea cluster before. So this will be our chance to actually explore that area. Okay, let's back out of the Amazon system here. And let's see, we've got Hades Gamma, Gemini Sigma, Argus Rho, Exodus, Artemis Tau. Ah, okay, here it is, so Maroon Sea Cluster. Alright, so we've got a few systems to deal with here. Our target really is the Vostok system, but there's a couple of others here that we could visit as well. Um, I think I'm more inclined to maybe visit the Vostok system first, and then we'll explore the other two. Alright, so let's start from the top as usual here. Pataton. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Pataton. <laughs> Sounds like potato, but anyway. Pataton. Uh, a rather small hydrogen helium gas giant. Pataton's atmosphere contains large quantities of chlorine. Scans of Pataton reveal a strange unmanned vessel in orbit around the planet. Tali brought it on board and determined it was a Sari maid, but very old. She discovered several ancient artifacts inside the vessel, including one of Matriarch Dilanaga's writings. Very good. Next, we've got Alco. The geological properties of Alco have been scanned from orbit, but little else is known about it. A fairly typical mix, outer system terrestrial of rock and ice, Alco has a trace atmosphere of krypton and xenon. Its crust is composed of silicates and water ice, with deposits of aluminium. Unregistered starship traffic has been recorded in the vicinity of this planet. Travel is not advised. Hmm, okay. Next up, we've got Not a Crew. Looks like we've got an active distress beacon on the planet below, Commander. No message, just a locator signal. Okay, this is definitely where we need to be. Let's have a read. Not a crew is a verdant world with abundant water, temperate climate, a thick nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere and a rich ecosystem. It would seem to be perfect for life. The relatively high percentage of oxygen makes humans feel energized and alive though it has also allowed insect analogues to grow to frightful sizes. Unfortunately, not a crew is a case of almost not quite. Thunderstorms are as common as on Earth, but in not a crew's thicker oxygen-rich at uh, atmosphere, they are deafening and spark constant wildfires. More damning, however, are the large and ubiqui uh, ubiquitous tufts of pollen that float on the high pressure, uh, high pressure air. In humans and other oxygen breathing species, they cause severe or lethal allergic reactions. All right, we will land in a moment, but let's have a look at the last planet here. Clomarthu. Clomarthu has a reducing atmosphere of methane and nitrogen. 
The surface is hot and mainly composed of sodium with deposits of uranium. In terms of size and orbit, Klamarthu is a virtual twin of Earth, but utterly lacks life. Hmm, interesting. Alright, so there is a uh, asteroid belt here, so let's just scan it. And we found a metallic asteroid. A rich, uh, sorry, metal-rich asteroid. Scans of the asteroid field revealed a large deposit of palladium. Uh, just quickly scanning the rest of this, I don't think there's going to be anything else there. Okay, definitely not. Let's land on Nautakru and see what's going on there. Alright, so we brought Garrus with us last time and Caden as well, so I think we'll just stick with that group and uh, yeah, hopefully we can make stuff happen with them. Bit of a balance between uh, biotics and tech. Yeah, so as the codex suggests, this place is very beautiful and, uh, you know, you would think is a perfect place for uh, settlement, but unfortunately the uh, pollen is just way too heavy here. I wonder if we couldn't sort of terraform this place to get rid of the pollen. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to quickly take a look at the squad set up here uh, and just spend some of our talent points because I feel like we haven't really done that for a while. So uh, firstly for Shepard I think we'll probably max out the combat armor and get a master shield boost here and then we might actually go more into commando as well. This will give us a new skill called immunity So hopefully that'll help us quite a bit. And this gives us assassin specialization. Uh, so reduces the recharge time on assassinate and marksman by 25% and increases damage with all weapons by 21%. That sounds really powerful. So <laughs> let's get that. And uh, Okay, actually this is immunity specialization, but I think we actually need the immunity skill. So let me just quickly undo those talent points once more. I will actually go into the fitness so we can get immunity. And that way, once we pump things up for commando, we can actually get the specialization for the immunity um, skill. Uh, and then we'll spend one point into the combat armor. And I think we will save the other two points for now. Next, Caden. So 19 points to spend. Let's see here. So you can go into Neural Shock, but uh, I think that's a massive investment though. Let's probably round out some of his uh, other talents here. So we'll do Lift. Uh, and we'll probably improve stasis and we'll improve barrier as well. Um, and we could probably max out his decryption uh, and electronics here. And yeah, we might as well improve uh, the sentinel uh, stat here as well, so uh, he just does, uh, does more damage overall. Alright, Garrus. So 16 points to spend here for Garrus. I think we should try to uh, get his decryption up to max, so we can actually swap him out. Um, sorry, not swap him out, but swap him in for the likes of Caden or Tali. And I sort of want to max out his first aid so that we can get 
electronics unlocked. Actually, no, that doesn't unlock electronics. Um, okay, yeah, so we just need a few more points in first aid to unlock electronics, so let's do that. Very good. And now we'll spend the rest in electronics. Alright, very good. So, yeah, as I said, Garrus is looking fit for uh, our, uh, I guess, additional hacker slash decryptor uh, whenever we need. So, right oh, uh, let's get the party started here. Uh, we've got an anomaly, some debris, and we've got a science facility, which is our goal. Let's work clockwise here. I do see some enemies over there actually. Um, so right behind us, around here somewhere. We may actually start with that side first because uh, we might not be able to find uh, these enemies again when we come back. What is going on here? Uh, okay. Thorian Creepers. Okay, so maybe there's a Thorian on this planet as well. Unless, uh, unless the scientists from Pharos came here and actually brought, uh, Thorian Creepers here as well. Not entirely sure. But, uh... Let's just quickly check this thing out. Looks like a huge chunk of a... Maybe even a space station. That's come uh, crashing down. We can't really seem to enter though. Strange. Alright, and uh, there's another group nearby so let's check out what's going on over there. Uh, and I definitely see some minerals over that way, but uh, let's just quickly check out what's going on in this small structure. Got a few crates here. Okay, this is a bit challenging. Goodness. go. Ah yes, we still have this item limit problem. So uh, when we get the chance next time we're on the Normandy, we'll actually try and clear things out. So let's, uh, let's grab all of that. And all of this. We may actually need to spend a little bit of time to uh, clear a few things out while we're out on the field, uh, but we'll see how we go. Okay, so let's try and make it up to uh, whatever minerals we can see on radar there, so maybe up this way. Ooh, okay, that is very, very steep. <laughs> um, I'm just checking to see if there's any other way we can get there. It's all pretty mountainous here, so I don't really see any other way. The other risk, though, is that we might not be able to get back up if we decide to go down there. Ok, 
Okay, let's... Let's just quickly slide down here. Whoa. Okay, that could have been really bad. <laughs> we made it though. Looks like a deposit of gold. Very nice. Another 44,000, which is awesome. But uh, now the real problem is getting back up. So how are we going to do that? Uh, maybe from here? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. That actually does look rather steep. So... Gotta see if we can make it up through here. Okay, definitely not. Um, let's see if we can go up from this side. Okay, that's good, but we can't really go beyond here because uh, that's the map limit. Just gonna see if we can quickly climb up this side. Okay, not bad. Okay, that is very steep as well. See if we can just get to the very top here. Ooh, okay, I think we managed to make it out. We just need to sort of navigate around like so. I wasn't expecting a bit of a mountainous excursion slash detour uh, when we landed on this planet, but uh, here we are. Alright. I'm liking the, uh, the planes that I see in front of me right now. Hopefully it's uh, smooth sailing from here. Just quickly check the map. Yeah, it definitely seems a little bit easier to get through around this side, so we we will actually try to circle around. I think maybe we can cut across here. Bit of a bumpy road here. Okay, not bad. I'm not really seeing what we're supposed to look for here. It could be beyond these ridges. Okay, right. This almost seems like another piece of uh, that space station thing that we looked uh, at before. Oh no, actually, this is ancient debris. My bad.
This escape pod is half buried in material that was that has washed down from the mountains. Though it has obviously been here for centuries, the computer still has power. Linking in with your hard suit, you recover a batch of files containing data on the Thra Thracia colony. There we go. Uh, anything else here? No. All right. So that was a bit of an expedition to find a Turian insignia. The 44,000 credits, uh, I don't mind though. So let's see if we can find this crashed probe. I mean, I don't exactly know if it is a crashed probe, but uh, our experience so far uh, has told us that every single debris is always a crashed probe. But I could be proven otherwise. We shall see. Is this the best best pathway? Oh yeah, I think so. It looks like there's like a little bit of a a pathway in there, so Okay, I'm not liking this uh terrain right now. Come on, Mako. You can do it. Ooh. Feel like we almost got stuck there. <laughs> Okay, this is very precarious. Um, uh, let's see. Alright guys, I'm just repositioning to see if we can climb a little bit more here. Oh my god, alright. That was a bit of an ordeal, wasn't it? Um, and now, another incline, or decline rather. What is that? Uh, let's, let's get down here. Must be some indigenous life forms. Heading out. They sort of look like, I don't know, cows almost. Let's take a look at this probe. Okay, we're at 296 items and we've got another two. So, and we are finding level nines and level tens here, so. I am going to spend a, a small amount of time right now, guys, to um, see if I can clear out the inventory. So uh, I will actually fast forward things for you guys. Uh, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, here we are back again. And uh, yeah, I've just completed the uh, item cleanup. So now we've got a little bit of inventory space to work with to pick up all the goodies as we uh, continue our playthrough. Uh, just going to have a very quick look at what's going on here with these indigenous life forms. Uh, looks like we can maybe interact with these things? No. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, as I said, it looks like sort of uh, cows, but then they have like little hands as well, almost like T-Rex style 
hands. But <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll we'll let them be. They're uh, definitely not causing anyone any harm right now. So uh, let's move on. So exploring this planet has proven to be a lot more difficult than I thought because uh, the terrain is definitely not our friend right now. Alright, looks like we have a little bit more climbing to do once more. So let's get to it. Just trying to think of where is the best place to try and climb uh, this mountain right here. Or should we go back the way we came? I don't think that's a good idea, actually. Because, uh... It took quite a bit of effort, actually, to, to get to that, uh, crash probe. I think we should be okay if we climb up here. Just need to take things slow. Alright, not bad. <laughs> Was uh, a little bit afraid that we wouldn't be able to reach there. Now I do see targets on radar this time. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of uh, these Thorian Creepers once more. Okay, and some sort of base here. I think it's a, what, a science base or something like that. Uh, I'm guessing there's going to be more of those creepers or whatever inside, so let's, uh, let's get ready for a bit of a fight. Okay. Looks like some sort of an infection or something there. Or maybe that could even be part of the Thorian from Pharos. I see targets. I see a lot of targets. Let's see if we can try and funnel these guys through. Okay, let's do a push here. Okay, Garrus is supposed to be using the sniper. One more target. We got them all, Shepard. Okay. Looks like it's safe now. Let's explore and see what's going on here. So yeah, a bit of a mystery as to why there are creepers around here, but I suspect those scientists. Uh, from Exogeny on Pharos have actually been uh, maybe shipping some of these creepers here or maybe even parts of the Thorian. Or it could be that there is another Thorian that lives on this planet. Hence why there's uh, all of those spores that we see. Let's explore this side first. Hmm, pleasant. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. Let's take all of that. Yeah, there's like I don't know, these are like cryo-sleep chambers, right? Because 
We've got a whole bunch of these things on the Normandy. Bunch of dead people there. I'm guessing maybe dead scientists? Okay, maybe we'll find some answers in this room. Rescuers? Oh, thank God. See? I told you somebody would come to investigate that signal. My name is Dr. Ross, Chief Exogeny Researcher at this facility. We've been trapped in this room for days. We're almost out of food and water. You got here just in time. I need to know what's going on. Why is this place crawling with Thorian creepers? How do you know about the Thorian? I know what Exogeny was up to. I saw what they let the Thorian do to those colonists, so I destroyed it. Our secret's out then. No point in my lying. You already know the worst. The creepers here were created using altered samples from the specimens on Pharos. We discovered a way to turn them into docile, obedient servants. Everything was going fine until a few days ago. Then all the creepers suddenly went berserk. Only a handful of us made it back into the safety of this room. It could be because we actually took out the Thorian on Pharos that uh, maybe caused them to to go crazy. But uh, anyway. Any idea why they turned on you? Maybe there was still some kind of link between the Creepers and the Thorian back on Pharos. The Thorian was unlike any other life form we've ever studied. I can't explain how, but maybe when it died, it, it somehow set off the Creepers here. Any chance some of the other people at the base might still be alive? Hmm, I doubt it. Too many creepers out there. They never stood a chance. We're the only ones left. Why didn't you send a clear message asking for help? All we had was that signal from the emergency beacon. This is a closed communications base. Exogeny was worried about someone on the project selling secrets to a rival firm or reporting our work to the authorities. We have no direct communication with the outside, only the emergency beacon. It sends a general distress signal to the Exogeny site on Pharos. They're supposed to send a team to respond inside of 24 hours, but it sounds like they had problems of their own. Huh, <laughs> yeah they did. They had the geth, so... Uh, looks like we can't really do anything with these people. They do have some soldiers behind them though, so I was sort of expecting a bit of a fight, but anyway... I've heard all I need to. Look, I know what we did here was wrong. I'll admit that. But it's over now. There's no sense reporting this to the authorities, right? You were in charge of this project. The safety of the staff was your responsibility. They trusted you, and you betrayed that trust. Be reasonable. I didn't mean for this to happen. Besides, how does it help anyone if I end up in jail? Normally, Exogeny would have my back, but it sounds like they're going to have their hands full cleaning up the mess on Pharos. But I've got money. A nice little emergency fund I set up. It's yours if you let us go. The victims here deserve justice. I have to take you in. Uh, that's not going to happen. Open fire. Open fire! Okay, so <laughs> I guess I was right. Uh... Let's plan things out here. Okay. There's a bit of cover to work with. Let's... I think these mercenaries are probably going to be the biggest problems. Uh, there's a bit of a cluster here of them. Uh, oh yeah. He doesn't have the uh, singularity... Uh, skill. Let's do a lift on one of them. And... We'll do sabotage on the other. Go, go, go! Grenade. Exogeny's second rate mercs prove no match for a trained Alliance Marine. With the last of the science crew dead, there is no reason to linger here. Jeez, we are savage. <laughs> Negative contacts. 
Well, uh, they were gonna open fire on us, so... Self-defense. Um, anyway. Let's grab every single piece of loot that we can find, and uh, we shall call it a day on this planet. Anything going on here? Doesn't look like it. Take all of that. I think that's it. Only thing left is to return back to the Normandy. Yeah, geez. Uh, so, I guess they were trying to do research on making slaves, almost? From those Thorian Creepers? Which is, uh, I don't know. Sounds pretty unethical. Righto, guys. So, I think that's the end for the planet Nodoku. I don't really see anything else on the map. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty keen on getting out of this planet because this planet's been a bit of a problem everywhere, hasn't it? Uh, the terrain's just a little bit crazy. Okay, here we are back on the Normandy, guys. So we have completed yet another assignment. Uh, and we do have a little bit of exploring to do in this cluster, but I just wanted to take a look at the other assignments that we've got lined up here. So we've got investigate, uh, sorry, investigate samples, go to... Oh, okay, so the Matano system, which is in the Maroon Sea cluster as well. Alright, so we can actually do this mission as well. Uh, and then get into the main Cerberus assignment. So, Matano system. Uh, let's do that. So we're in the Vostok system right now. And the Matano system is over there. I've got this Caspian... Actually, sorry, let me... Just have a quick look. Uh, so we've got the Matano system. What about Cerberus? Yangtze system in the Voyager cluster. Okay, so that's a, a different cluster altogether. Alright. Well, we know where to go for the last assignment. But I think maybe let's do a little bit of exploring here and check out what's going on in the Caspian system. And if we have some time, we will check out the other system and uh, see if we can complete that uh, assignment. Let's start from the top as usual. Antida. Antida is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant. Its at atmosphere is darkened by traces of sodium. It is one of relatively few planets known with an orbital period of more than a millennium. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, it takes 1,296 years just to, uh, just to circle its star. That is crazy. Scans of Antida revealed a group of defunct turrets orbiting the planet. The recon team carefully retrieved one of the turrets and brought it on board. Tally dismantled the weapon and found it was marked with a... Carthon Outpost Insignia. Next, we've got Almacrux. Almacrux has an atmosphere of methane and ethane. Despite its great distance from Caspian, the energetic young star heats the surface, sorry, the surface almost temperate to almost temperate levels. Thick ground fogs are common at the Terminator, where water ice frozen during the long dark side night meets the warm air masses from the day side. The crust is mainly composed of copper with deposits of sodium. Almacrux's abundant water and relatively mild temperature and gravity have placed it 
on the short list of terraforming candidate worlds. However, there is significant opposition from eco-ethics groups who assert that Almacrux's primitive methanotropic, sorry, meth methanotrophic bacteria may be a precursor to a full-fledged native ecology. Uh, oh, okay, I didn't realize this, but there's something here. The MSV cornucopia. Hmm. We'll, we'll return back to that one because no doubt we might be able to board that one. Clotanka. Clotanka is a large but low density terrestrial world with an atmosphere of nitrogen and carbon monoxide. Its crust is composed of sulfur and unremarkable silicates. Occasional deposits of heavy metals, usually the result of meteor strikes, dot the surface. High speed winds, powered by the hot blue star Caspian, present a constant hazard. Atmospheric entry is hazardous and EVAs are discouraged. Scans from orbit have detected a small deposit of iridium. Very good. Next, Franuri, or sorry, Farnuri. Farnuri has a trace atmosphere of carbon dioxide and helium. The surface is mainly composed of silica laced with iron dioxides, sorry, iron oxides, indicating the world has had an oxygenated atmosphere at some time in the past. Given the relative youth of the blue star Caspian and the significant gravity well of Farnuri, this must have occurred with astonishing swiftness, perhaps a result of some cataclysmic event. Further research is required. Scans from orbit have detected a large deposit of gold. And no other planets here, let's just have a quick look at the asteroid belt. Okay, doesn't seem to be anything of interest there, but let's check out MSV Cornucopia. The Cornucopia is a Coulomb-class modular conveyor of human design. While obviously adrift, the Cornucopia is not broadcasting any distress signals. Uh, the registry is under X-Solar Shipping of Sol. Hmm, interesting. Uh, we'll still take Caden and Garrus with us this time. Okay, empty so far. Oh. Okay, we've got husks here, um, which means that we might be dealing with the Geth. Husks. The ship's probably crawling. I guess we don't have to worry. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, any survivors would have turned into these things, I suppose. Um. Usually when there are husks, there might be geth, or I guess it's a sign that the geth may have already been here. Get our health back up here. Yeah, okay, so this place is very claustrophobic. Um, and usually husks are not really of a, uh, a big problem, but in uh, tight spaces like this, they probably can deal a lot of damage if we're not too careful.
Let's do a lift there. Yeah, I do not like these tight spaces at all. Big group. Okay, we've finally made it to the other end of this room. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be anything that we can pick up, but... Alright, so there's the cockpit and the other two rooms here. Let's check out the other two rooms first. Ah, uh, okay, there are these... Uh, husk spikes so I'm guessing um, all the crew would have been converted into husks with these things thank you very much let's check out the other room here okay no more husks we may have taken all of them out but uh, I'm just Making sure that we're still prepared, just in case. We've got a couple of those level 9 optics now, which is good. We should try and uh, switch up to those. The logs show this ship was exploring near the Perseus Vale. Looks like they found some kind of alien artifact. They brought it on board, and then... This makes no sense, Commander. They plotted a course straight into the Perseus Vale, like they wanted the Geth to find them. That artifact must have done something to them. Why else would someone fly into Geth space? The entries don't make a lot of sense after that. It's like the Captain's mind was falling apart. It, it doesn't say anything about how they got back into our territory. The Geth turned them into husks and left the ship where someone would find it trying to show us what happens to anyone who goes into the veil. Hmm. Okay. Pretty sinister. Um. I'm not totally sure if we picked up a assignment for this one. Let me just take a quick look. Is it this one? Yeah, I think so. Uh, the Cornucopia was exploring a region of space bordering the Perseus Veil when the crew discovered a strange alien artifact somehow connected to the Geth. They appeared to have been brainwashed, then transformed into husks and sent back into human space either as a trap or a grim warning. And it's already completed, so... Uh, hmm, interesting. Well, I guess that's that for this freighter, but... Uh, yeah, at least it's not dangerous anymore, so... Now time to make it back to the Normandy, although this is a little bit of a maze. Let's just try and retrace our steps here. Uh, yep, here we are. That wasn't too bad. Okay, so that's, uh, I guess, another assignment that we picked up and completed immediately. But uh, since we're still here in the, uh, the, I can't remember the name of the cluster now. There we go, the Maroon Sea Cluster. Uh, we should actually go to the last system, Matano, and complete the assignment that we have. Uh, in the Matano system. Alright, let's do some scanning here. 
Apo, a craggy world of igneous and basaltic mountains. Apo is racked by constant geological activity. While volcanic hotspots are rare, continental plates are constantly piling up new mountains, subducting old ones, or causing slips along tr transform faults. Apo has a dense atmosphere composed of nitrogen and carbon monoxide. Due to the constant earthquakes and landslide activity, surface exploration is not advised. Rubble-covered wrecks of a half-dozen expeditionary ships stand in mute testament to the planet's instability. Loud and clear, no landing on Apo anytime soon. Chaska Chaska is a large but low-density world, fundamentally similar to its inner neighbour Inti. Like Inti, Chaska is tidally locked to Matno. The same side always faces the sun, resulting in a scorching day side and a frozen night side. In the temperature area, sorry, in the temperate areas around the Terminator, temperatures average around 30 degrees Celsius. Combined with a nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere, the slender band of habitable terrain allows limited colonization by humans. Chaska's ring is unique. It appears to be, for lack of a better term, a massive piece of alien installation art. The rings are made of small pieces of synthetic material and are almost invisible from space. From the ground, they catch and scatter the light of Matano in picturesque ways. It is not known who created the ring or when. Chaska is very early development. With little more than a few pioneer teams scattered across the surface, information is being collated about native hazards and ecology, while a massive colonist recruiting drive is gearing up back on Earth. And uh, this is probably the planet that we need to land and complete that assignment, but we'll come back to that. Let's scan the next one. Ilipa. Ilipa is a hydrogen helium gas giant with an unusual ruby color caused by contaminants in the atmosphere. The world has over 120 moons, one of the highest totals of all known systems. Once full development of Chaska colony begins, a helium-3 refining infrastructure will be developed in the Ilapa system, con uh, concentrated on the large ice moon of Koniraya. And Supe. Supe has the composition of an ice dwarf planet, but is unusually large for such a body. It has a trace atmosphere of krypton and xenon. The frozen surface is dotted with deposits composed of potassium and light metals brought to the surface by cryovolcanic processes. Supe's ice surface was often used as a source of potable water by passing merchant vessels. Since the Alliance claimed the inner system world of Chaska, satellites placed in orbit automatically bill any vessel landing on the world for the mass of water removed from the surface. Exogeny has had a difficult time keeping these satellites operational. They often meet with accidents caused by impact with jettisoned ship debris. While scanning this planet, you detected a large deposit of magnesium. Very cool. And I think we... Yeah, we haven't scanned this one here. Inti. Inti is a terrestrial planet with an atmospheric... Sorry, an atmosphere composed of ammonia and helium. Its surface is mainly composed of sodium oxide with deposits of magnesium. Its density is rather low, leaving the planet tide locked to Matno. Inti is an unremarkable world, drawing little more than a cursory scan for surface pirate anchorages when Alliance patrols enter the system. And we've got a couple of uh, asteroid fields here, so there we go, we've already found something. A metallic asteroid. A metal-rich asteroid. While scanning this asteroid field, you discovered a large deposit of platinum. Just gonna scan the rest of this. OK, 
Okay, and let's scan the outer belt as well. There we go. A rocky asteroid. This asteroid has an unusually sculpted and artistic appearance, with many long sweeping curves. While scanning the asteroid field in the Matano system, you discovered a badly damaged ship. The recon team found no survivors on board, but they did find a Prothean data disk. Hmm, interesting. Maybe it could be a an old Prothean ship or something. Anyway. Uh, and we should return back to Chaska and uh, make our approach. All right, let's again bring Caden and Garrus, and uh, or actually maybe we'll leave Caden behind this time and we'll take Liara with us because it has been a while. And yeah, Garrus should be able to unlock stuff for us when we need to. So let's do it. All right, here we are on the planet Chaska. Uh, just taking a quick look, but it feels very similar to the previous planet that we uh, <laughs> were uh, exploring before and uh, quite a bit of pollen on this one as well. Let's just take a quick look at the map here. Yeah, quite a few things to do here as well, but I think guys this is a pretty good place for a bit of a break. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave a like, dislike or a comment or two down below. Stay true and I'll see you in the next one.